Welcome to a World of Good podcast. I'm Nate Tapman. And I'm Andrew Gale. And we are two friends who love Jesus, care about the church, and travel the world to share stories of people who do the same. Our conversations happen in all kinds of places, like a coffee shop in an airport terminal, or even the back of a crowded taxi. But no matter where we go, from Argentina to Zimbabwe, we capture stories of the good God is doing around the world. And we hope those stories will do you a world of good. Welcome to A World of Good. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Andrew Gale, and I co-host this podcast with my good friend, Nate Tapman. For this episode, we reached out to a couple ministry friends to hear what life is like where they serve during the coronavirus pandemic. But before we do, I have invited some guests from a past program to join us again today. We have Eleanor and Elias here with us in the home studio. Hi! Hi! We're so glad that you're here. These are my two kids. Eleanor just turned eight, and Eli is three. So, Eleanor, when the uh, stay-at-home recommendations are lifted uh, and we're able to go out and, and see people and do stuff, what is it that you are looking forward to doing? Um, going out to lunch and playing with friends. Going out to lunch and playing with friends. Awesome. What kind of lunch? If you could choose one place to go out and have lunch, where would you go? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. You don't know where you go to eat? No. I like, I eat a lot of places, so I don't know where to eat. Okay, so you eat a lot of places. This is true. You're kind of tattling on us that we like to eat out, don't we? So Mm -hmm. where, but if you could choose one place, where would it be? Where do you miss the most? What kind of food do you miss the most? to La Cha actually. Okay, La Cha. So you want to go to La Cha too? For those that don't know, and most of you wouldn't, La Cha, La Chariada is a uh, Mexican restaurant close to our house that we love to go and and get Mexican food at. So Eli, for you, you want to hold the microphone? Uh Okay, you're holding it. Just hold it up and you got to talk right into the top of there. So for you, when we get to leave the house and go do stuff, what are you excited to go do? Um, play with Buzz Lightyear. But you get to play with Buzz Lightyear right now. What What do you want to do? Yeah, where do you want to go when we can leave home and go do stuff? Um, play with boy, go to people's houses and play with boy. Go to people's houses and play with friends. That would be a lot of fun. We miss playing with our friends, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. So, Eleanor, what's one thing that during this, uh, when we had to stay at home time, this last 10 weeks, we've been here for 10 weeks, can you believe it? What's something that you've learned during that time? Um, I don't know. Have you learned anything that about yourself? Being or? with no friends is the worst thing that could happen. Yeah, you like being with people, don't you? It's difficult not being around friends. It's the worst thing that could happen. Yeah? Worst. The worst. Yeah. For an eight-year-old, I believe that that is probably the case. Eli, have you learned anything new as a three-year-old during coronavirus? Um, I like I like boy with Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, we're all about Buzz Lightyear right now, aren't we? Okay, so um, last question: Have you guys missed being at church? Of course. Yes. Yeah. Well, what do you like about church? Like, what do you miss about being at church? Uh, play with the toys at church. You like playing with the toys at church? I what miss, do you miss? I miss getting to be in prayer with all people. Yeah? Yeah, that is sad. We It's fun when we get to spend time in prayer together, isn't it? It's kind of sad when we don't get to do that as a community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks, Eleanor and Eli, for sharing a little about your experience during this pandemic. And now on to the interviews. Today we're going to hear stories from two church leaders, one living with his family in Brazil as a missionary, and the other a national leader in Pakistan. My first guest, Jonathan, is a missionary with his family in Brazil. Uh, Can you tell us a little about yourself? My name is Jonathan Todd. I, along with my wife, Beth, and our children, Miriam and Jonah, are Church of God missionaries in Itaituba, Brazil. Jonathan, can you tell us a little about Itaituba, the city where you live, and what your daily life looks like right now? 
Itaituba is a frontier city located in the middle of the Amazon rainforest in the Amazon region of Brazil. Since the middle of March, we have been socially isolating and practicing social distancing by staying at home as much as possible. Schools have been closed in our area and we canceled all of our planned travel throughout our region for the next few months. As we had only recently come back from home assignment, we had not started teaching in the seminary yet, which is one of our primary roles here. And due to COVID-19, uh, our seminary is currently not holding classes. Uh, we're not allowed to, and it would not be safe to do so. We are also wearing masks anytime we are out in public, and only Beth or I are going out in public at all to do any purchases. We are keeping our children at home. Jonah had open heart surgery last year and is considered higher risk for coronavirus, and so we are trying to keep the family safe through that. We are so grateful that you guys are being safe, especially in light of Jonah's underlying heart issues. How is the rest of your city dealing with coronavirus? Are there challenges with that? I mean, are they able to social distance? Are they wearing masks? What does that look like? Social distancing is really difficult here. We live in a culture that greets everyone with hugs and with warm handshakes. We share food and drink with one another. And people just spend a lot of time in close proximity to one another. And so asking people to stay at their homes and to stay six feet away from each other is a really difficult thing to do in this culture. Can you give us a big picture perspective of coronavirus in Brazil? We've seen about it on the news, especially recently. Can you tell us about what it looks like um, across Brazil? Brazil is a really large country. It's roughly the size of the lower 48 United States. And due to its size, the pandemic has affected different cities at different times. Where we are, we are between two and four weeks behind where the U.S. is right now. Because the country is so large, most responses to the pandemic have happened on the state and then the local level. And so our city was very close to start suspending certain activities such as school and to start asking for big gatherings of people to end for the foreseeable future. And the reason for that is in our small city, uh, we only have a limited healthcare infrastructure. And in fact, eight weeks ago, we had no ICU beds within 200 miles of our city. Uh, today, we have an ICU ward with 10 beds, but those 10 beds need to serve a radius of more than 100 miles in any direction. And so one of the ways that we can all stay safe is to minimize that large group contact and to wear masks. Has your ministry been affected? Ministry, because of this, has changed. Uh, you can't just spend time visiting with people on their front porch or going to people's houses and doing activities together. Uh, it's been a transition for many of our churches to start holding services online. A few of our churches were already live streaming prior to the pandemic, but now all of them have been learning to do so very quickly. The churches that have been doing that for longer have been helping the churches that are new to it um, to get going. But it's also given some tremendous opportunities for ministry as well. Uh, our churches are finding that they're reaching more people in their neighborhoods and community through live streams. People that had never been in the doors of the church before are seeing that someone near them is live streaming and they're clicking on to see a service. Um, one of our congregations has people calling them after almost every service saying, well, I've been saved. What do I do now? And a pastor said, Jonathan, what a great opportunity do we have? to serve our community right now. Also, because we are all mostly at home or in the church office, we have the opportunity to connect to each other electronically through things like Zoom. Beth and I have conducted most meetings with Global Strategy and with other people through Zoom for the last almost six years now. Something very new to people in our community, and so it's something we've been able to help them with. We've also been able to help them with strategies to help connect to one another in ways maybe they hadn't thought of doing before because the focus was always being physically together. I love that you guys are positioned to support the church in this crisis. I mean, your your history and your your previous work, you know, even just understanding Zoom has given you a platform to walk alongside the local church in a difficult moment. And that is just that's just really cool. Now, you've shared some of the context of what's happening uh, in Brazil and specifically in Itaituba. Are there any specific stories that can help us understand this pandemic um, and how it kind of has affected you guys and, and the community that you serve in this unique location? One of the things that's difficult in this community is that we live in an area with high unemployment. A lot of people don't have much of an education. They don't have a great opportunity sometimes to go to college um, or to learn a trade and a skill. 
And we live in an area where the average family lives on just two to 300 US dollars a month. And that's in an area where food prices are pretty comparable to what they are in the United States. And so this high unemployment that's happened as a result of coronavirus has been particularly devastating to some families in our community. One friend of ours, uh, Maria, she is a day worker. She works in people's houses cleaning. Um, she had a part-time job, but a few months ago, that part-time job was phased out as the business changed. And since then, she struggled to find work. Initially, when she lost her job, her family was still okay because her husband could work. But some months ago, he was in a motorcycle accident that essentially broke his face. He has no bones in his nose. Um, he has a hole in the roof of his mouth. He's had one surgery, but he needs more. Um, and we don't know when those surgeries will be. Thankfully, the surgery can be done here in Itaituba, but he's had to travel to another city a couple hundred miles away just to have those consultations. Because of that motorcycle accident, he isn't able to work and his wife has been unable to find work. They have parents that live with them. They have a young son who's the age of our daughter. In fact, he goes to school with our daughter. And so this is a family that has been in crisis um, with very few opportunities to bring an in income to pay the electric bill or buy gas to cook with, much less buy food. We have been helping them personally as best we can, but the problem is there's thousands of Marias just in our city right now. In our region right now, we have a lot of people that are going without much food, that have no work and have no means of income. This is a time that's opening new opportunities for ministry for our churches, but it's also showing needs in the community that maybe had flown under the radar for some people before. So you ask, we ask that you pray with us as we search for God's wisdom and how to respond to the Marias in our community, as we look for ways that we can better support our pastors and our leaders, and look for new ways to help bring income and food um, to those who need it. Jonathan, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, we will definitely be praying for you, uh, for Beth, for Miriam, for Jonah, as you guys serve the church in this critical moment. I'm joined today by Reverend Dr. Samuel George, National Leader for the Church of God in Pakistan. Thank you so much for joining us today, Reverend George. Praise the Lord. This is Reverend Samuel George with the Church of God in Karachi, Pakistan. And I'm so glad to be on this program. Can you tell us about the Church of God in Pakistan and how you're doing in the midst of this pandemic? Here in Pakistan, uh, we are... Uh, living day by day, we one day at a time. And uh, our church here, the Church of God, um, it comprises of uh, little congregations that are spread out throughout the country. Uh, most of them are daily wages workers uh, who work all day and at the end of the day they earn their money and they go home with the money and and that's how they buy their food uh, for their family, for the children. Uh, and they have been sitting home for months, so, uh, some of them since February. And uh, it has been uh, a very difficult and challenging times for all of us, especially um, the Church of God. Our churches have been um, shut down for nine Sundays. This is the ninth Sunday that our uh, church uh, has not opened its, its door for the congregants. So are people able to stay healthy by staying at home? Uh, what, what does that look like? How is the, how is the community dealing with the pandemic? Uh, so it's a, a tough time for us, a difficult time. Then, but we are trying to stay um, home and keep our distance from each other as a uh, for the instructions uh, of the authorities, um, but living in in such a big city like Karachi, it is uh, very challenging, very difficult to do so. Um, especially when we go to the slum areas, the urban areas, where the population is astronomical. Uh, one family has eight or nine members, and and. Uh, all the families are home. Usually a home comprises of a one room or maybe a room and a half. And all of them are just crunched in there. Imagine 
being in that room day in and day out, not being able to go in, go out, see the sunshine, have the fresh air, uh, just go out and see your friends. So it's, it's a difficult time. But um, the Lord is with us, as a, as a scripture says, he will protect us. So we are trying to stay safe and trying to keep uh, our distance. Uh, but it has been a difficult time for us. Thanks for giving us that that context and that perspective. Um, I'm confident that lots has changed for your community. Um, But one of the things that that I'm really interested in is what does ministry look like in the midst of this? We we have been supplying food packages, food relief to the church members. uh, And our congregations are, uh, the numbers are so, so huge, uh, those who need food. Uh, And many of them, they feel shy or they feel ashamed to even come out and ask. So we have to approach them and ask them. And uh, when we call call them or when we go talk to them, that's when they share that they don't have any food. So the need is uh, huge. uh, uh, The government is telling us that this is going to continue till December. Uh, the situation, the lockdown. Um, And that means people are going to need food. They're going to need, some of them need medicine. Um, Many, they are diabetics and they are cancer patients and other kind of patients. And the the medicine, it costs money. If you don't have money, you you can't purchase medicine, um, then you are out of luck. So that's the situation here in our country, in our city. Uh, So we are trying to reach out to them with the love of God. And as uh, a church, a church of God, we have been supplying food to many of them. But the huge is, uh, sorry, the, the number are so huge that they have become very overwhelming for us at times. I'm so grateful that even in the midst of all that's going on, that the church is still finding ways to care for people in their community. Um, they're still finding ways to uh, support and love and, and, uh, and, and even to provide food for people in their community. Before we are done, are there any stories that you can share uh, from people in uh, Karachi and your church community there? One story that comes to mind uh, from our city is of a nurse. He, he is a, a nurse here in the hospital, well-known hospital, and so, so is his wife. Uh, come to find out a few days ago, he was uh, tested positive for COVID-19. A young man, he's, um, I think, uh, not even 30 yet. Uh, close to being 30, have uh, a child. So they are all in quarantine now, and it's just, you know, breaks our heart, breaks my heart to see them going through that. And we are praying that the Lord will um, heal him and his uh, result next time will, will become negative. So please keep him in your prayers. Uh, actually keep both the husband and the wife and their child in prayer. They are in quarantine and the Lord will um, do a miracle for them. They're, they're good saints of God, faithful, and they're praying people. And he was, he was a nurse. I mean, he is a nurse. And he was in the hospital uh, in that section in that ward where, where they were housing all the uh, all the corona, the COVID-19 people. But um, we believe and we are praying that the Lord will heal him, uh, heal uh, their family. So keep them in your prayers. Thank you. Reverend George, thank you so much for sharing with us today. We are definitely praying for you and for the church uh, in Karachi, Pakistan, especially as you guys are meeting the needs and caring for the vulnerable in your community. And thanks so much for joining us for this episode of A World of Good. We invite you to continue to pray for the church around the world as they find ways to serve and care for their communities amidst this pandemic. 
And if you want to join the effort to help bring hunger relief to those in need, you can visit the link in the show notes to find out more information. And we hope you'll join us next time for another opportunity to hear about the good that's happening all around the world. Thanks for listening to A World of Good. A World of Good is a podcast production of Global Strategy and Church of God Ministries. Our theme song is Colorado by Leo Flores. If you want to join the conversation, visit us at Twitter at A World of Good Pod, on Instagram, A World of Good Podcast, or visit our website, chogglobal.org slash A World of Good. And join us next time as we share more stories of good from around the world.